Hey students, it's Mr. Sager is back with another video for Earth and Space Science. Today's topic is the Big Bang Theory. By the end of this video, you should be able to construct an explanation for the Big Bang Theory using scientific evidence. Let's get to it. The Big Bang Theory represents the best scientific explanation for the origin of the universe. In order to construct a scientific theory, scientists use observations of the natural world, or in this case, the universe. Then, like detectives, they piece those observations and evidences together to create an explanation for why something is the way that it is. By making observations of the universe, scientists have constructed the Big Bang Theory. We'll discuss the many evidences that support the Big Bang Theory in a moment, but before we do, let's take a brief tour of the universe. Once we're better familiar with our place within the cosmos, then we'll better be able to appreciate how the Big Bang may have led to the universe that we see today. We depart on our tour from Earth, our home planet. Every thought you've ever had, everyone you ever met, and every step you've ever taken occurred right here. In fact, in the history of humanity, only 12 individuals have ever set foot on a cosmic body other than Earth. Even then, the trip to the moon was just a mere 250,000 miles. That's barely a sliver of all the space in the cosmos. Our Earth is just one of seven other planets that are gravitationally bound in orbit around our sun. Several other objects that include asteroids, comets, and dwarf planets circle our home star. All of these combined are known as the solar system. The inner solar system contains the sun, the planets Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, and the asteroid belt. The outer solar system is home to the gas giants Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. In the outer reaches of the solar system we find dwarf planets such as Pluto, as well as leftover matter from the creation of the system in the Kuiper Belt and Oort Cloud. Our solar system is just one of many other star systems that inhabit the Milky Way galaxy. The Milky Way galaxy is a collection of billions of stars as well as all of the other planets that orbit them, all held in a spiral orbit by the force of gravity. Scientists believe that a supermassive black hole is located at the bright center of the Milky Way. Earth, our Sun, and the solar system are located in orbit approximately 26,000 light years from the center of the Milky Way galaxy. We are not alone, however, in our galactic neighborhood. The Milky Way is one of 30 to 50 other galaxies located within 1 to 2 million light years of each other. This tight neighborhood of galaxies is known as the local group. Each of the galaxies within the local group is home to its own share of billions of stars. The Andromeda Galaxy is the Milky Way's largest galactic neighbor. The local group of galaxies makes up a small arm of the Virgo Supercluster, home to thousands of other galaxies located within their own local groups. At last, we finally reach the edge of our observable universe. The Virgo Supercluster is just one of millions of other superclusters that line the universe like threads throughout a tapestry. Every supercluster, local group, and galaxy is rapidly moving apart as the fabric of the universe continues to expand and stretch in every direction. We live out our lives in a four-dimensional universe. Over three of these dimensions, we have relatively complete control. We are free to move within the space around us, going up or down, to the left or to the right, and forward or backward. Over the fourth dimension, however, we are captives. The treadmill of time only moves in one direction. We cannot go back in time, nor can we jump forward in time. Our existence is, at least for the time being, confined to the prison of the present. But what if we were momentarily able to suspend the natural laws that govern time and take a trip into the distant past? What would the universe look like? What would we see? If we went back far enough, we would find an instant in which the entire universe, all the matter and energy ever to exist, was confined to an infinitely small point. Every star, planet, and galaxy ever to traverse the cosmos would be reduced in space to a singularity smaller than an atom. We have reached a time before time. Then suddenly, everything changed. A rapid expansion occurred that set in motion both time and three-dimensional space as we know it. That rapid expansion is known as the Big Bang. The Big Bang occurred approximately 13.7 billion years ago. As far as scientists have been able to prove, the Big Bang was not a creation of new matter, but rather the stretching and expanding of the fabric of space. It is important then to understand that the Big Bang was not an explosion like a bomb blasting out into open space. Rather, think of it like stretchy fabric being pulled outward in all directions. 
Prior to the Big Bang, matter did not exist as atoms, for it was far too hot and much too dense. The Big Bang changed that, however. As the fabric of space rapidly expanded, all of the matter within the universe began to cool. Just three minutes after the Big Bang, two of the basic building blocks of atoms, protons and neutrons, formed from the cooling matter and condensed into simple atomic nuclei. Over the next several hundred thousand years, matter cooled still further, and electrons joined the atomic nuclei to form simple elements. The next several million years saw clouds of free-floating atoms gathering under the influence of gravity. The gravitational pull was eventually strong enough to form the first stars in the universe some 400 million years after the Big Bang. The formation of galaxies soon followed. Our Earth, the Sun, and the solar system formed nearly 9 billion years later. Now nearly 14 billion years after the Big Bang, Observations today suggest that the universe continues its rapid expansion. But how do we know? What evidence do we have to support this theory for such a spectacular beginning to the universe? In the late 1920s, a young astronomer by the name of Edwin Hubble made a discovery that would forever change how we view the universe. Peering into the far reaches of space through the largest telescope of its kind, Hubble spent months observing the light from distant galaxies and studying their motion. Ultimately, Hubble confirmed what generations of scientists and astronomers had been unable to prove, that the entire universe is expanding. Like a balloon, the very fabric of space and time appears to be inflating. Hubble and other astronomers used light from far distant galaxies to confirm this discovery. All light falls on a spectrum called the electromagnetic spectrum. Light on the spectrum is characterized by the amount of energy that it carries with it. Gamma rays carry lots of energy, while radio waves carry little energy. We can break down the electromagnetic spectrum even further by looking just at the visible light on the spectrum. You will easily recognize the colors of the rainbow, with red light carrying the least amount of energy and violet light carrying the most. As astronomers studied light from distant galaxies, they noticed something unexpected. In almost every case, the light coming from those galaxies happened to be slightly redder than the light that they expected to see. In other words, the light coming from those galaxies brought with it slightly less energy than the amount of energy that light coming from a typical galaxy would normally emit. How could scientists account for this phenomenon? In this animation, the top diagram represents light coming to Earth from a typical galaxy. The bottom diagram represents light coming to Earth from a galaxy moving away from Earth. It turns out that the light appears to lose energy if the object emitting it is moving away from the observer. It is as if the light waves are being stretched and lengthened so that all visible light is shifted slightly towards the red or less energetic end of the visible spectrum. This is called redshift and is what Hubble observed when looking at galactic light through his telescope. Even more interesting is that light from the furthest galaxies shows the greatest redshift. This means that the further away a galaxy is from Earth, the faster it is moving away and thus the more its light energy is being stretched towards the red end of the visible spectrum. The observed redshift of light from these galaxies strongly suggests that the universe is being pushed apart by some force. The Big Bang is a highly likely contender for the reason behind this universal expansion. So if the Big Bang indeed was responsible for the formation of the universe, that raises the question, what type of matter would you expect to see as a result? Atoms are commonly referred to as the smallest unit of matter and are composed of densely packed nucleus of protons and neutrons surrounded by a cloud of rapidly rotating electrons. Each atom has an identity determined by the number of protons contained in the atom's nucleus. Chemists refer to these unique atomic identities as elements. There are over 100 known elements and about 90 of these are found commonly in nature. The remaining 10 or so have only been synthetically produced by scientists in laboratories. All known elements have been cataloged on what has come to be known as the periodic table of elements. The most basic of all elements is hydrogen. A hydrogen atom is typically made of a single proton and a lone orbiting electron. As such, hydrogen appears as the first element on the periodic table. Helium is the second most fundamental atomic element, made of two protons, two neutrons, and two orbiting electrons. As such, helium is found as the second element on the periodic table. All matter in the universe is made from elements found on the periodic table. Curiously, however, the universe tends to have an overabundance of some of these elements, and very few of others. Astronomical observations have led scientists to discover that over 98% of all matter in the universe is made of only two elements, hydrogen and helium. These elements are found primarily in stars, in interstellar clouds called nebulae, and in the massive centers of galaxies. So you may ask, why does the universe tend to favor hydrogen and helium over all of the other elements found in nature? Again, the Big Bang provides a likely answer. During the Big Bang, conditions were such that energy fused protons and neutrons together to form the nuclei of simple elements, such as hydrogen and helium. 
As the universe quickly expanded, however, there wasn't enough energy available to fuse any of the more complex elements. Those would only come later with the formation of stars. Thus, there was only a narrow window of opportunity in which the formation of atoms could happen. The great abundance of hydrogen and helium in the universe therefore presents still more compelling evidence for the Big Bang Theory. One final evidence in support of the Big Bang Theory is the presence of cosmic microwave background radiation that is found spread uniformly throughout the universe. To understand exactly what cosmic microwave background radiation is, an analogy will be useful. When campers ignite a campfire, the fire produces light and heat as the wood burns. There comes a time, however, after all of the wood has been burned that the fire no longer produces any light. Even still, you can feel heat from coals for hours after the flames have gone out. That heat is simply infrared radiation, a less energetic form of light that we can't see with our eyes. So how does this analogy compare to the Big Bang? Scientists theorize that, like a campfire, the Big Bang must have produced a tremendous amount of light energy from the very hot and very rapid expansion of matter. As the universe expanded, however, that matter cooled, and the light began to lose its energy. The electromagnetic energy, therefore, would no longer be detectable as visible light, but would perhaps take the form of a lower type of energy on the electromagnetic spectrum. Recall that microwaves have less energy than visible light. By pointing specialized telescopes at the sky, astronomers have detected microwave radiation left over from the Big Bang. These microwaves have come to be known as cosmic microwave background radiation and can be found all throughout the universe. Just like the heat from coals after a fire, this microwave radiation literally represents leftover energy from the Big Bang. To recap, Earth is just a tiny planet in an immense universe. The universe appears to be expanding and the Big Bang Theory attempts to explain why. The redshift of light from galaxies, abundance of hydrogen and helium in the universe, and cosmic microwave background radiation are all evidence in support of this theory. So that wraps up our video on the Big Bang Theory. I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, Ad Astra.